Have you been cheated on? Do you fear that you might be cheated on? Do you want to really get to the nitty gritty of what's going on here? Because whether you are cheated on, have been cheated on, or have any kind of concerns about that, that is about you, not about your mate. Ah! I know. You thought I was about to talk to you about your mate because mine came home and told me that he was enjoying being flirted with. And it may shock you to hear that my response to him was, that's between you and God. They ain't got nothing to do with me, ultimately. But I allowed him to go through his process. Now, if you want to understand how that happens, then stick around. I got you. Hi, I'm Zara Green, and this is Live in Clarity. I do three things here. Help you to dismantle myths and belief systems that don't serve you anymore. In fact, they sabotage you and you don't know it. Recondition minds. And by doing that, you automatically get on your path to happy. If that all sounds good to you, then subscribe and engage. Like, comment, share, and come back. Now let's get started. Now let me first say that I've done this marriage and divorce thing a few times. So which husband is just being left up for grabs? And as long as you stay your ass in obscurity where I left you, nobody will know who we're talking. <laughs> okay, let me set this stage. So I was in my 20s, so that automatically eliminates one of them. So he had an office job with a lot of women. We were young, 20s. And he would come home telling me about his day. This is a man who didn't talk a whole lot, but he'd come home and he'd be so giddy about his day, telling me about Linda and, and Sue and, and Judy and yeah, several women. And every day he was giddy about what was going on. He's telling me on, they went out to lunch together. Yeah, they went on groups. And so it was obvious he was enjoying the people he worked with, right? Don't we all want that for our partners? Well, I started to notice after a while, he's just a bit more giddy than he is just sharing his day. So I ask him, I say, are you enjoying the attention you're getting from these women? His response was, I mean, after blushing, he kind of tried to straighten it up. But then we were both in religion. And I think the whole honesty thing, we'd gone through uh, premarital counseling, something else I'll get to. And one of the things that we talked about was being honest, always being honest in the relationship. So he said, yeah, I am. I said, okay, well, let's talk about the attention. I mean, are, are it, the attention you're getting, is it just, you know, like platonic friendship kind of attention? He blushed again, and it was obvious it was not. And I said, tell the truth. And he goes, well, no, not really. I said, ah, so is there one that you're liking a little bit more than other? Are you liking them equally? What's going on? Got giddy again. <laughs> and ultimately, what he was saying is that they flirt with him, and he can't say he didn't like it. Well, I'm hearing him out. I asked, right? See, we can't ask questions and not be able to handle the answers. It's never about what is happening. It's always about how you respond. Now, I'm going to get to why this is the best approach. Too many of you get in your feelings and you never really get to the nitty gritty of what's going on. If you're going to know what's happening in your relationship, then you have to get in control of your emotions. The only way to do that is to get in touch with you. We all respond differently to things. Things strike us differently. You know why? Because we all have different environmental experiences that have painted our realities, how we process information. So it's important that you understand how your environment has colored your world so that you can do the work on you internally so that you can allow other people to be 
who they are. I've kind of gotten a bit ahead of myself. So I'm already on one of the points. One is that you are not responsible for how others handle life situations. You are only responsible for how you respond. Others includes your significant others. Whether you are just dating, married, whatever, you are not responsible for how they handle life situations. He had never experienced that kind of attention before. Who am I to tell him not to be giddy about it? He, when, growing up, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't a dude that everybody looked at. You know, he had, he had a glow up. So he was more attractive as he got older. It was not happening in his earlier years. Now I, on the other hand, I've always known what it's like to have attention. Honey, I was always fine. I was always cute. I was always turning heads. So I am accustomed to attention. He was not. Who am I to block that experience for him? Who am I to tell him how he needs to respond to that? Who am I to paint his world with my experience? You don't get to do that. Now, this information is transferable. You can take this and put it, lay it, just lay it over other situations because you can't ever give somebody else your experience. You can tell them how you feel about it if you choose, but what good would it do if I, the truth of the matter is I wasn't bothered by it, but if I had been bothered, what good would it do if I tell him, hey, listen, I'm feeling uncomfortable about this and I need you to stop this right now and don't you go out to lunch with them no more and don't you da 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 What good is that? Which leads me to point number two. You are not an extension of your mate and your mate is not an extension of you. Becoming one is a lie. You, you, you can't, you cannot become one. You are two separate individuals for the reasons I just told you. Each of you came into this world for your own path of purpose and you have to give each other the room to develop and grow. And it's why I say all the time, you know, young people, I would never say don't marry. People say you're too young to marry. You're too young. Look, marriage protected me from a bunch of bullshit. Seriously, I married young twice and it protected me from bullshit. While my friends were out doing all kinds of stuff, I was married. I was married young. I don't think making long term decisions while you're young is a good idea. But hell, people do it all the time. They have babies, they buy houses, they buy cars, they do all that stuff. Yeah, it's a whole lot more to have to deal with later on if it ends up like most relationships in divorce. But marriage protects a lot of people. We don't get to tell people what their life paths are going to be. People make decisions in the space that they are in. I'm just trying to give you some information so that you can process things easier so that you don't end up like a whole lot of people with a whole lot of baggage after they've gone through a lot of things. You can go through this thing a lot easier. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be hard. Is it going to be new? Yes. But even in newness, the more information you have and the more balanced you are, the more neutrality there is, the less charge there is, then the easier you can move through them. And I'm telling you, the sooner you get in touch with your emotions and really allow yourself to start to process everything without taking it personal, then the better off you're going to be. Number three, he has the right to process life on his own terms and according to his own value system. Now I told you we had premarital counseling. A lot of what we talked about in premarital counseling had a lot to do with values. And let me tell you something, you can have the same values and still not be able to process things in the same way. We agreed that our value system said that we would stay true to each other for the rest of our lives. It's easy to say until situations show up to test just how valid that is for you. 
That doesn't mean you, your intentions weren't good. That doesn't mean he didn't mean it when he said it. That doesn't mean it's still not what he wanted while he was going through all that. But having a desire for something and having the capacity to live up to it is something different entirely. This brother's self-esteem was still developing. It wasn't strong yet. It wasn't developed to the point that he could just be around that and enjoy it and not be affected by it. Now, affected positively, negatively, that's all part of his process, not mine. Which was my, why my response at that time was, that's between you and God. That ain't got nothing to do with me. He could have taken his little tiddly twink and stuck it in wherever he wanted to. That's his business. That's between him and God. Now, I have a right to respond to whatever him and his twiddly wink decide they want to do. We had an agreement that that tiddly wink wouldn't be happening with not been nobody but me. But I did not get in the way of his growth. Now, eventually, it just kind of faded. He wasn't working there anymore. And by then, other stuff was coming up. There were other things. There were other problems, other issues, other stuff. Just don't get lost in it. I was also fortunate enough to have a father who had laid out all kinds of stuff, honey. I grew up in my daddy's barbershop. He called things as they were, had all kinds of grown conversations, and I was privileged enough to be part of them. I knew I couldn't stop none of that if I wanted to. So I wouldn't put the energy into it. I decided early on in life that I would preserve not just my energy, because everything is energy, y'all. I would not just preserve my energy, but I would always be focused on strengthening me. Personal growth has always been important to me. From the time I was like 15, I've been reading personal development books. I've been expanding my vision about what my life could be. I would not just let it be about what was happening around me and what other people were doing. I learned from those around me. I saw what was possible um, from people around me. Uh, in terms of what to do and what not to do, and what was limited by the people around me, then I learned from books, I learned from documentaries, I learned from other stuff to expand the realms of possibility for me. So I never thought that I was limited by what somebody else did, and because I always loved me more, yeah, even then, I've gone into every relationship loving me more than I cared about how that relationship turned out. And perhaps that's the most important thing you need to hear. Because if you got to be chasing somebody to give you attention and to, to not get excited when other people are paying them attention, then y'all are on different pages. You are not on the same page. Either allow them the opportunity to just grow through that thing without any attachments and without feeling any kind of way about it. And I would only say do that if you are strong enough, if you are fortified within yourself and have done the, your own personal development work so that you are not torn apart, destroyed by the end of it. Not the case for most people. So whatever age you are, whether you are in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and you are still struggling in that area, then I have a tool that can help you. It's a mini masterclass, and it really starts to get you in the process of understanding what it means to be conditioned. And when you're conditioned for things that are anything away from building you up, then it can take you off your game. It can get you to the point that you don't even understand that you are still an individual on an individual path. And whether you are with somebody, booed up or not, then life is still about you being an individual, not you being one with anybody. It's a fallacy. Becoming one is a lie. Two people can come together, have the same um, value systems, and uh, sojourn together, support each other on their individual journeys, even have same goals. You can work together, you can do all these things, but it doesn't mean you become one. That never happens. Always leave people the freedom to grow in their own ways and don't ever, when somebody's showing you who they are and how they're growing, don't shut that down. The smart person sits back and allows them to show you who they are. And then don't argue with that. Make decisions as a result of it.
Don't ever think that there's only one person that you can be happy with, or there's only one person that determines your happiness. The only one person that does is you. So whether it's good, it's rocky, it's awful, or it's done, you can still be solid in the middle of it. And if you're not, that may be all the more sign that it needs to end. You got enough people trying to tell you to stay in something that ain't good. That's not what I'm gonna do. Because I don't believe in forever, I believe in as long as. As long as it's something that I still have the desire to work towards. And the moment I do not, then I have the right to change my mind. Now that could be for a short period of time, an extended amount of time, or forever. But I give myself permission to make that decision. I don't let outside forces make those decisions for me. Now what you do is up to you. That's all I got for you today. It's your life, sweetheart. Choose it just as it is. Own it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Change it as long as you can breathe and learn. It can get better. From Medellin, Colombia, bye for now.